Welcome to the Supra Safe Lock Key Box. Yeah, this cool gold bar was sent to me by West Coast Picks. Harley, thank you very much for sending this my way. I had a lot of fun playing around with this lock and yeah, learning how it works and understanding um, under which circumstances I can decode it and when not. Um, this lock is meant to be mounted next to your door outside and you can put your um, entrance key here and everyone who knows the combination can open up the box and yeah, enter your house. Um, this box here came locked up uh, in the package from West Coast Picks and I uh, was able to decode it uh, without knowing the, knowing the combination um, and after about 10 or 15 minutes I managed to get it open. Um, West Coast Picks was so nice to um, include the combination for me here under this uh, tape just in case I would need it but yeah I was lucky I didn't need it. Um, of course I want to show you how what I did in order to get it open and this method method does not work all the time it depends on the actual combination and I will explain this to you in detail um, but first I want to open up uh, the lock and show you how it looks inside and I also will show you how it operates because this is necessary for you to understand um, how decoding works yeah and you see I've made myself a little plastic cover so that we can um, look inside without the inside parts jumping out and we can also operate this lock and nicely um, watch how it works. Okay, so uh, let me adjust the lightning and then we will start. So this is a um, safe style um, lock and we have the dial here and we have uh, three wheels and the first wheel is directly connected with a with a um, with a dial. Uh, you can see I can turn it back and forth, and it uh, turns all the every time I, I turn the dial, so it's directly connected. And um, therefore, this first wheel is also called the um, uh, the driver wheel. And we have two more wheels: uh, wheel two and wheel wheel three. That's how I. Uh, name them and they are connected to each other by pins so there is a pin um, at the first wheel and at the second wheel and once the first wheel has uh, turned one full revolution it engages with the pin of the second wheel and then it takes along the second wheel and so from the second wheel to the third wheel um, these wheels have gates uh, you can see one gate here for example and once all the three gates are aligned beneath these three prongs, you can push down the button and then the lock opens. Uh, you can also see that the first prong is a little bit longer. So when you try to decode this lock, you can only feel um, the resistance um, between the first prong and the first wheel. So that um, decoding of the positions of the uh, two remaining wheels um, is made um, yeah, more difficult or impossible. Yeah, let me demonstrate this to you, the operation. So I turn now the, the first wheel with turning um, of the dial and you can see it turns all the way around. And once the full revolution is complete, it engages with the second wheel and takes along this. And now the second wheel turns around and after another full revolution it takes along the third wheel and now we can uh, push it, position the third wheel's uh, gate underneath the prong and now I turn back the dial so that the uh, first wheel uh, turns freely until it engages with the second wheel from the other side leaving alone um, the third wheel so, and now I can place the second wheel's gate underneath the prong. And once this is done, I again change the um, rotation direction. And now I can place the first wheel's gate underneath the prong. And now I can open up the lock. Yeah, that's how these uh, safe lock um, 
uh, logs work. Um, now you know the basics, you know how these wheels are connected to each other, you know that the dial directly um, uh, controls the rotation of the first wheel and you know that the first prong is a little bit longer. Uh, you know that the wheels have these gates that need to be aligned underneath the prongs and you can also see these little cutouts here uh, false gates that should um, destroy the feedback on the lock um, when trying to decode it. So when you push down the button you always engage here, you always stop here at these um, false gates. So that's um, a measure I believe to make uh, feeling what's going on inside the lock um, harder. Yeah, let me um, close up the lock again with the correct cover here and lock up the, the box and then I will show you how I uh, decode okay, it. Okay, so here it's locked up and I also uh, shuffled the wheels. Yeah, and I made this drawing here so that we can better understand what's going on. Here is the dial and the dial is connected to the driver wheel directly with the axis. Wheel 2 and 3 um, are not directly connected to the axis so that's why I left this gap here but they are connected to the neighbor wheels uh, with the pins. Now remember the uh, three prongs. Um, the longest of the three is the one that sits um, over wheel number one, so that when I now push down the button, I can feel the resistance of prong number one at wheel number one, which I'm able to control directly with a dial. So that's how I started. I just pushed down the button and try to feel the type of resistance and we can see it uh, catches the dial or catches wheel number one um, and that's of course the false gate. So and that's yeah about the same type of uh, feedback you get from every position. Um, here's a little bit different between V and W but we will come to that um, a little bit later. What I want to show you here is something else. So here it's um, remarkably different. Around, yeah, around P you, you see a very wide gap. So that's not, the, not a false gate. So that's actually the true gate of wheel number one. Um, but remember, wheel number one is the last wheel to set. So when we looked inside and observed the wheels turning, we have um, set wheel number three at first, then two, and then one. And as we now know the correct position of wheel number one, we know that the last letter of the combination is P. Okay, what I did then was I turned around the dial a couple of times to the left so that all wheels would turn um, at the same time together. Then I did the same. Uh, I pushed down the button and just hoped that I would feel um, a difference in the, in the feedback. And you can see the, the normal amount of play that you get. But here was different. So between V and W um, the feedback changed and the normal amount of play changed to almost no play. And you can also see here the, the dial jumps up and down. So I hope that around W uh, we have a good um, letter of our combination and I hope that it is um, the right position of uh, wheel number three and <laughs> not wheel number two because wheel number three needs to be uh, set first. Okay, so assuming uh, this is the right position for wheel number three, I now uh, change the rotation direction and turn around uh, the other way until I reach W again because now um, I turned around wheel number one, one full revolution until it um, hits the pin of wheel number two from the other side which causes wheel number two to turn along with wheel number one.
but not uh, disturbing the position of wheel number three. Okay, I pushed down the button and yeah, checked what's going on and I felt a good amount of resistance here at Y and there's again almost no play. And I tested with Y and turned back to P and it didn't open so I knew that was not the right um, position. And I repeated the whole process and I passed Y and Okay, so that's uh, probably not the right uh, number because it shows a little bit of play and then I continued and here again um, the feedback or the play stopped and I thought okay maybe around C between C and D it's a good number and I turned back to, um, to uh, set the position of wheel number one to the already known last uh, letter and it opened. Yeah, so that was the right combination and it turned out that West Coast picks uh, choose a very devious combination. <laughs> okay, so now let's open it up and yeah, here you can see one of the stuffed animals, uh, a lizard, a homemade um, uh, stuffed animal of my younger son because he likes to uh, bury his um, lizards inside this sacrifagus, uh, as he calls it. Yeah, now let me open up um, this log again and I will show you why um, I was able to decode this combination and I will also explain why other uh, type of combinations or other combination of combinations uh, will not work. Okay, see you in a second. Okay, we can again look closely inside the log. And I first want to show you how to find the true gate on the first wheel. So the first wheel is the one that can be directly controlled with a dial. And the first prong is the longest. So now when I push down the button, um, the prong and the wheel are um, binding. And at the position where the false gate is, um, uh, it stops and it gives um, typical type of feedback and there is a little bit of play. So it's about the same for every uh, position of the false gate. And now we reach the position of the true gate and here we can see and feel um, a wide movement and we can now um, recognize P as the last uh, letter of our combination. Okay, now I turn the dial all the way to the left until all the uh, wheels turn at the same time. And now we can see something very important. We can see the alignment of the false gates of wheel number one and wheel number two. And that's important because now when I push down the button, um, we can see that prong, that's a, bad position so that's better. So we can see that prong number one and two uh, go in the false gates and if I push down the button from the outside and that's also important if I push down the button from the outside the whole thing here tilts a little bit. You can see there's a little bit of play and if I push it from the outside the main pressure goes to the last prong and how deep the first prong actually goes inside uh, the false gate of the first wheel uh, depends on how deep the last prong can, can go. And now you can understand if the, the two false gates of one and two are aligned. This works pretty nicely and you can therewith um, easily identify um, the true gate on the last wheel. Because now when I push down the button I can feel that it goes a little bit deeper and as it goes a little bit deeper it gives um, a, um, a, a bit more pressure to the first wheel and therewith um, the play just stops here. So the play that you can see for all the other positions is caused by the uh, last wheel's uh, resistance against the last prong and therewith the first prong cannot go um, 
as deep as um, yeah as possible, so to speak, but at the position where the last prong um, goes inside the the true gate, the first prong can push as hard as you push on the button um, to the first wheel, and therewith you can um, you can feel that there is no play at all. Okay, so now um, I turn back the first wheel in the to the right, I turn it to the right, so that it then engages with a second wheel from the other side, and yeah, then it's it's a little bit of a playing, because um, I would then feel, of course, that this is binding really hard, no no play at all, and also for the next position, uh, and the third position is the right position. Now we have moved the uh, second wheel skate to the right position, which appears to be around C. And the last um, letter we already know, oh, turned it to the right, uh, to the wrong um, direction. The last letter we already know, which is, uh, which is P, and then the lock would open. I just messed it up a little bit. Would open. Um, yeah, it was important um, that the two wheels are aligned with respect to the uh, false gate, but this is not the case every time. It depends actually on the combination. Okay, let's choose. quickly disassemble this lock. It consists of three outer wheels, these here, and two spacers. And here we can uh, see the inside. Um, these are the inner wheels. The first, the driver, is connected to the dial, and the other ones are connected to each other with the pins. Yeah. And here are the outer wheels with the letters so that you can easily uh, set it to your uh, custom combination. And here are the false gates. And now if we align two of them with the false gates um, on top of each other, like so, and now turn the uh, top wheel by one position, you can see the gates are not aligned anymore, so that's not good for us for decoding. And then we turn it further on they are again aligned. So we have a 50% chance um, that we get a combination that we can decode. And I can tell you I was really frustrated when I first um, got into this lock with the West Coast PIX uh, uh, combination and then I changed the combination and I was not able to get uh, uh, this lock decoded anymore. And But yeah, now I understand why. Okay, let's quickly reassemble this lock and uh, set a custom combination. And this works in the following way. You turn around the dial all the way to the left until all wheels uh, turn at the same time. And then you turn it so that this arrow here points towards the uh, button. And then you just uh, need to insert the, the wheels. Um, and that's the first... Uh, letter of your combination, in this case it's K. Then comes one spacer. Then comes the next uh, letter, let's say M. Then another spacer. And then the last. Oops. Let's say E. Yeah, that's it. Then you close the cover and then you're done. What was it? K M E? K M E? Uh, e, not I. <laughs> it opens. <laughs> All right. So, West Coast Picks, thanks again for this great fun lock. I really had a lot of fun um, uh, playing around with it. And yeah, everybody else, 
Thank you very much for watching. Happy picking and decoding. Cheers and bye bye. Bye bye.